Hi guys, welcome to Biochemistry and Cell Biology and in this presentation I'll be covering the basics of haemoglobin and myoglobin. So the learning objectives are to know the similarities and differences between the structures of haemoglobin and myoglobin and to understand how these relate to their functions. To understand how a change in structure in haemoglobin is related to its cooperative oxygen binding. To use haemoglobin as a case study to be able to describe the four levels of protein structure. To be able to draw oxygen dissociation curves for haemoglobin and myoglobin and relate these to protein structure and function. And to understand how hydrogen ions and carbon dioxide affect the binding of oxygen to haemoglobin. So this is just a quick summary of the differences and similarities between haemoglobin and myoglobin. So haemoglobin is an oxygen binding transport protein, whereas myoglobin is just a straight oxygen binding protein. Haemoglobin carries oxygen to respiring tissues, whereas myoglobin stores oxygen in tissues ready for when it is needed. Haemoglobin is found in red blood cells, or better known as erythrocytes, whereas myoglobin is actually located within the skeletal and cardiac muscle. So this is just a list of properties of myoglobin. So myoglobin is a single polypeptide chain which consists of 153 amino acids, has a molecular mass of 17.8 kilodaltons, which is a measurement of mass, it's a globular protein, and it's, as you can see, it's, just, its secondary structure is pretty much only alpha helixes. Obviously, exceptions of these linker proteins here. The hydrophobic amino acids are buried in the core of the protein, so they are sectioned away from water, whereas the hydrophilics are mainly located on the outside. Haemoglobin, on the other hand, has four polypeptide chains. An adult haemoglobin consists of two different types of chains. You've got two alphas and two betas. The alpha chains have 141 amino acids, whereas the beta chains have 146 amino acids. And each of these chains have a heme group similar to myoglobin. Each ch chain has a heme group, which is a prosthetic group attached to it. So a little bit more information about the heme group. So heme is a protoporphyrin ring structure with an iron ion in the center, as we can see here on these diagrams. The iron ion bonds with four nitrogen atoms and the ring, and two more above and below the ring, as we can see here. So these bonds above and below are two histidine residues. So this one up here, this one that's physically binded to it, this is called the proximal histidine. And this helps it allow to bind to oxygen atoms to become oxygenated. So heme, so when oxygen binds to one of the heme groups, it causes the whole haemoglobin to change shape slightly. So it doesn't bond to all four straight away, it only binds to one. What this then does, it causes the affinity for oxygen to bind to the to other heme groups too. And this therefore makes the binding of oxygen to haemoglobin cooperative. Now then, this is an analogy I came up and I hope you guys enjoy. I call this the four single ladies analogy. So here we've got four single ladies. We've got heme 1, heme 2, heme 3 and heme 4, as we can tell. Then all of a sudden, one of those hemes gets a boyfriend. So, that just leaves these three other ones. But in order for them to get boyfriends, they think, right, we need to do something about this, so we're going to change. So here we are, we've got the three desperate, remember, desperate single ladies who have got a greater affinity for oxygen now. And because of that, they all manage to get boyfriends. So the four single ladies are now happily four in cooperative with oxygen. Okay, so that's just a nice analogy, but now we're going to move on to oxygen dissociation curves. So haemoglobin and myoglobin have different affinities for oxygen. If we look at haemoglobin first, at this point here we've only got one of the oxygen's binding, then that confrontational change causes this massive spike here. All right? If we compare that to myoglobin, it's only a single polypeptide chain and the oxygen can, rub, can readily bind to it, so you get this sort of shape here. And also if you notice, the affinity for myoglobin is higher than haemoglobin. What this means is that at this point here in particular, when the pressure of when the partial pressure of oxygen decreases to a point, the haemoglobin will transfer the oxygen to myoglobin. So this means the myoglobin can take the oxygen from haemoglobin. So now we're going to talk about the effect of carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions. And this and this effect is known as the Bohr effect or the Bohr shift. So the carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions are called allosteric effectors. They promote the release of oxygen from haemoglobin. So if we think about that in terms of the oxygen dissociation curves. What this does, it shifts haemoglobin from this shape here, it shifts it to the right. So, if, so imagine this mouse is the is the a curve, it'll come more out to here, to so this sort of shape. So this means that haemoglobin can rapidly 
um, exchange the oxygen from hemoglobin to the myoglobin. And here's just a few other interesting facts about hemoglobin. Well, about hemoglobin. The histidine residues actually prevents the heme groups from coming into contact with each other. And this prevents them from oxidizing themselves to Fe3+, which will therefore prevent oxygen from binding to them. Histidine residue also prevents carbon monoxide from binding. This therefore means that the heme group has a lower affinity for carbon monoxide. However, we know this does, is, as, as this is biology, nothing's perfect. If carbon monoxide does bind to heme, to heme it binds irreversibly, which means that uh, it can no longer bind to oxygen. So that's why some people who die from carbon monoxide poisoning, they're literally suffocating themselves because they can no longer take in oxygen. So that's it for this presentation, guys. Now we come to the test yourself section. So here I'm going to set you three questions. I have allocated amount of marks for each question, and I want you to try and answer these. <clears throat> so, first one, draw an oxygen dissociation curve for both hemoglobin and myoglobin for two marks. For ten marks, outline the similarities and differences between hemoglobin and myoglobin, and explain how these differences relate to their functions. Then finally, an athlete is undergoing a marathon. Describe how the products of respiration cause the respiring tissues to more readily take up oxygen. So that's it for this, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and good at revising. Peace.